Howdy folks, AJ coming at you again, your resident vintage gamer. And this is my first video uh, that I'm posting uh, after uh, my wife had her accident. And so I've been uh, very busy with uh, with working. because I, I do have a regular job. And I've been working, juggling, working, and taking care of my wife because she's uh, she's bound to the to basically to the to the couch and the and then to a wheelchair and so forth. So um, and basically taking care of everything here at the house. I've been trying to juggle all that, but I uh, I said before that uh, this month, November, uh, was deemed by the uh, the people that started the Facebook group. Um, uh, old school role playing game. Uh, I think it's old school role playing game uh, or gamers uh, group on Facebook. Um, they deemed November to be World of Greyhawk month. And so I said to myself, I would be damned if I let the entire month of November go through without posting a video regarding Greyhawk, the World of Greyhawk world. Um, to my channel, and so that the people in that group, there's quite a few people in that group, um, if they were interested in seeing the massive collection that I have uh, put together over the years regarding World of Greyhawk, um, if they wanted to see it, they'd have a chance to, and I, and it needs to be done during the month of November because that is um, the official month for World of Greyhawk on that group. So um, I am making the time to do this. And this is going to be probably a pretty long video. And if you are here and you do not know anything about the World of Greyhawk, you never played Dungeons and Dragons or any, you know, tabletop role-playing games, this may not be of inter any interest to you. If you're strictly coming to my channel looking for video game information, news, you know, um, reviews, whatever, this may not be of interest to you. And I I'd hate to waste your time. If you're curious, you're more than welcome to stick around and, and check it out. There's going to be a lot of information, but this video is going to be primarily interest of an interest to people that have been playing D&D for a long time and or um, are very familiar with the World of Greyhawk or they're curious about the World of Greyhawk in the D&D in the world of Dungeons and Dragons. So without further ado, I'm going to dive right into it. So. I've shown this before on a long time ago video, one of my very first videos. Anyway, I did go into this a little bit. Um, this was uh, when D&D first started. Um, they just had the little, the little uh, pamphlet books. And this was the first, this uh, Greyhawk supplement was uh, the very first mention of World of Greyhawk um, as far as a publication goes. Um, this was, this was it. And it, Specifically, this this kind of goes into um, uh, rules about you know war games and using uh, you know figures and, and paper and pencil and all that to do war gaming and that type of thing. Um, and, and this is the infancy of Dungeons and Dragons. So um, this was uh, basically just kind of a supplement at that time. It was not meant to be a fully fleshed out description of the World of Greyhawk campaign world. So, but for those of you that are collectors or interested or whatever, this is the first time that uh, Greyhawk was in a public, a public work uh, that was published. So, um, so we'll move on to the next thing here. Then you had the, um, then you had the folio that came out after that um, in the early '80s, I believe. Uh, 1980 to be exact. Um, I actually have two copies of this. This is an earlier one, uh, and it's kind of neat because it shows you on the back. It shows you, you know, part of the maps, and and it shows you all the different shields of the different um, the different provinces and all that stuff. Uh, and then inside, it gives you um, kind of a. Let's see if I can do this. It kind of gives you a look of what the terrain. Uh, legend looks like and all that and then of course there's maps there's two big maps and then there's actually the gazetter in here which tells you about the world where it tells you about um, the uh, geography and uh, all the different uh, uh, 
things that go into all the different places, like the where the capital is and where the different provinces are and who's in charge of what, you know, who's the uh, king of this area or the, the duchess of that area or whatever. Um, it's all in here and it provides you the basis for running your, your campaign in the world of Greyhawk. Um, then, uh, after that, you had the first box set that came out, which looked like this. Um, and it went into a lot more detail. Um, and this is the back of it. It actually shows you um, that there's two different books, and then there's a giant two-piece map in there and everything um, of the whole world. And basically what, what this did is it just went into much more detail than that than the uh, the folio did. Um, it actually has two separate books in it. Um, one of which this is the catalog and to the of the land of the Flaness, and which is what Rehawk was also called. And then again, it goes into the it has the shields and all that stuff in there, the coats of arms, I should say. And uh, it's got it just tells you, you know, what each. Um, land which province or um, section of the of the map you're looking at who's in charge of that and, and what it's all about and all that so it really gives you a good um, breakdown of giving you an idea of if you wanted to create a campaign what part of the map you would want to you would look through, you'd read through this and you'd find maybe there's a, a town that sticks out to you and you say hey that's a pretty interesting town and I like where it's located in conjunction with this type of terrain because maybe you're thinking about doing a dungeon in a mountain mountainous area and it's in good proximity to that and so then of course you could read up on it and get some particulars as far as how you want to start your campaign um, and that was what this was very very helpful this is probably the most helpful out of all the the works for World of Greyhawk this box set was probably the, the one that I used the most um, then you also had, there was a, um, a hardbound book that came out um, after that box set, of course, came out. You had this hardbound book, which basically uh, goes into, I mean, this is, how many pages this is, but I think it's probably, looks like 128 pages, um, and it goes into even more detail um, about, and it even goes into NPCs and, and that type of thing. So just more, more reference material if you're thinking about getting into the World of Greyhawk. Uh, the World of Greyhawk uh, was the first, for the, and this is just an educational thing for those that may be here that don't know about it. It was the very first um, role-playing game, game world that was created. Um, this was the original for Dungeons and Dragons. And then you had other ones that came up, Forgotten Realms, um, Dragonlance, Mistar, Dark Sun. I mean, it, there's a whole bunch of them that came after that, but this was the, the original. And then you had a couple of other uh, box sets that came after that. You had this one called Wars, Greyhawk, World of Greyhawk Wars. And this was basically a box set that allowed you to um, control armies in your in your campaign. Uh, it gave you the rules and some other tools and so forth if you wanted to have army sized battles um, in the world of Greyhawk. This told you how to do it and it also um, set up some background information and so forth about why the why the world of Greyhawk was at war at that time. Um, and then to go along with that timeline after that, of course, you had From the Ashes, which was, timeline-wise, you had Wars, and then you have From the Ashes. And so basically, uh, it just all depends upon when you wanted to start your campaign, what time period. It could be pre-war, post-war, uh, whatnot. And there's these different box sets that could, you know, give you information on, depending on what time period you wanted to start it, you had different box sets you could use for source material. Um, and then the last box set was actually all about the city of Greyhawk, which was the capital 
of the world of Bray Hawk. And this went into great detail because Bray Hawk, as you can imagine, it's a capital, it's a huge city. And so this, uh, this basically gave you everything you needed to know to, if you wanted to have your, your character, you were DMing and you wanted to have your characters go through city adventures in the city of Greyhawk, or even if at some point they were going to come through there, this gave you all the source material you would need to flesh that out and have, you could have, I mean, I had um, gaming sessions where I was DMing where my player character, we played all night long and they never left the city. It wasn't necessarily city of Greyhawk, but whatever city we were, that the, the, the adventure was in, they never left the city. We were, I mean, and they had a ball. So um, this is very useful if you wanted to do city adventures. Um, now, I'm going through this kind of quick because I don't want this to be, you know, an hour long video. Um, but at any point, I could, if people ask questions and so forth, I can go into more detail about a lot of this stuff. Um, so most of that there uh, got you up through second edition um, D&D. Or advanced D&D with this stuff, and there was a lot of there was a lot of modules. I have all the modules. I have everything with the Greyhawk logo that there's ever been printed. I'm pretty sure, um, but there's no sense in going through all that stuff on this video. Um, but I, I will go into a few more things. Let me grab them over here for you. So then you had. They started, you know, re-releasing, even after all that stuff that I just showed you, they started re-releasing. Um, this is called The Adventure Begins, and it was kind of trying to do a reboot of the Greyhawk. Uh, it no longer says the world of Greyhawk. Um, it now just says Greyhawk on the logo, and it was kind of a reboot, and I'm trying to get people interested in the game world again. And so this was basically, instead of a box set, this was uh, the new source material to give everybody... Um, background on how to get into the game world and so forth. And they uh, they even had, like this is the Slavers campaign, which they reprinted here um, and uh, put it into uh, the uh, the new logo and everything else, and they called it the Slavers. And then they had other modules like this. This is three uh, a three module series right here. Uh, the Doom Grinder and the Crypt and all that and there's just a ton of, of these different source materials and, and I have like I said I have pretty much all of it and they even had I'm gonna show this one uh, because this one doesn't carry the Greyhawk title or the the logo on it it says Ra it's, it, it's Ravenloft but it's called Vecna Reborn and Vecna is a one of the most well-known NPCs in the in the world of Greyhawk, and um, for whatever reason, this is published under the Ravenloft title uh, logo. But uh, it even tells you at the very beginning. It says that you need to be um, you need to be uh, familiar with the Greyhawk setting uh, when dealing with this module. Um, so I consider that. Uh, Greyhawk source material because that that NPC is very very well entrenched in the world of Greyhawk. And then uh, they got into basically this is like third edition here, and they printed a thing called the Dungeon and Dragons Gazetteer, and basically it's about the world of Greyhawk, but they don't call it that anymore. They call it the D and D SETI, and uh, here it says uh, the D and D setting is one of the longest, longest lived fantasy campaign worlds in existence. Well, I got news for whoever wrote this. It is the longest. There's no not one of the. It is the longest. Um, but they don't call it that. They just say they just call it the D and D setting now. They got rid of the Greyhawk uh, logo and everything and just basically considered that the default world for Dungeons and Dragons. So it's kind of nice that they made it the default world, but they never they don't call it Greyhawk anymore at that point. And then you had um, if I can find it here, you had the let's see where where was it? 
There was the Greyhawk. I know I've got it here somewhere. Oh, here it is. Then they had the Living Greyhawk Gazetteer. And the Living Greyhawk uh, campaign was basically how it, it's a pers it was a persistent um, it was a persistent example. I shouldn't say example. That's not the right word. It was a, it was a persistent instance of the Greyhawk world that continued on, and people from all over the world, if they wanted to, could contribute to the campaign. And it can, it was a persistent world. It kept going. It wasn't. It was not um, confined to a specific group of people or anything else. It was. It was the worldwide campaign, and they they did a lot of this at tournaments, or I shouldn't say tournaments, but uh, conventions and stuff like that. And uh, they uh, this went on for quite a while, and this is all the source material needed for the Living Greyhawk campaign. But even if you're not, even if you weren't going to do the Living Greyhawk campaign, the persistent campaign with it, you know worldwide and so forth. Um, the source material in here is fantastic. It gives you all kinds of information. So um, very useful if you were thinking about doing a, a Greyhawk campaign. So now what I'd like to do is I'm going to get into uh, some of the more obscure items that people don't necessarily know about um, there's few. There's a lot of us that. There's a lot of us that do. That are hardcore Greyhawk people, but then there's a lot of people that have no idea this stuff even exists. So I will show you that stuff now. So we'll start out with. Well, this one's not too obscure. There was a a, a monstrous compendium. This doesn't have the pages in it. I have the pages in the in the binder. Um, but there was a monstrous compendium for just for Greyhawk specifically. Um, now, getting into this obscure stuff, uh, there was this, and I don't remember what issue of Dragon Magazine this came out of, but there was the world, or the weather in the world of Greyhawk. And it, it was really, and I don't know, it didn't have to be specific to World of Greyhawk. I, I, you could use it for any game world really but um, and I, I guess they say that because they give you um, certain it's based upon some of the seasons for the for world of Greyhawk but I mean you could you could customize this to any game world you wanted to but basically it's just a bunch of tables and stuff that uh, that you could uh, look at and get random weather occurrences and so forth uh, based upon the time of year and, and 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 the geography of where the players are and so forth, and it would uh, depending upon your roles, you could have a hailstorm, thunderstorm, you know, whatever. Uh, and not only that, but then it had the effects table where, uh, depending upon if it was really severe weather, it would affect the topography. Uh, the trees could get uprooted. Uh, um, you could have a massive sandstorm that buries. The player characters, I mean, all different kinds of the imagination, of course, goes wild with what you could do with that. So, and unfortunately, I do not know what issue of Dragon Magazine is because I took it out. So, it's out there somewhere. I'm sure you could Google it and find out which one it was in. Um, this is another item that uh, was, in a was in a Dragon Magazine. I don't know which issue this was out of because I took it out as well. Um, this is the only poster that I know of, um, there might have been more, um, the Greyhawk campaign poster, and um, at some point I'll probably frame this so I can hang it up. Uh, I thought it was pretty cool. And let's see if I can get this so you guys can see it better. There you go. Where role playing, let's see what's that say? Where role playing began. Ah, that is correct. So, unlike that other person that wrote that other thing that said, one of the longest living campaigns, no, the longest living. <clears throat> uh, 
Um, this I don't know if you can find anymore. It might take some Googling, but you might be able to find it. Um, this is an introduction. I actually printed this off. This is an in introduction to Greyhawk by Roger Moore, um, who is a life, uh, you know, long time uh, writer for uh, TSR. I don't know if he worked for Wizards of the Coast or not, um, but he produced a lot of different things. And he did, um, he did a, there's several pages, eight pages or so here of, you know, just what he considers the best way to concisely put uh, an introduction off of into the world of Greyhawk. You might be able to find it if you, if you Google it. Um, I did not do that, so you can try that yourself. Um, and then I think I got this at the same time that I printed this off. Uh, this is a timeline of the history, and this gives you all, the entire timeline uh, of the history of the uh, of the world of Greyhawk. Gives you all the dates um, of all the different occurrences. So if you were building a campaign and you wanted to put it in a particular time period. You could look at this and you could see what had just occurred in the world and what was getting ready to occur and those types of things that would be really very helpful. Um, so if I were you, I would Google both these, a timeline of the history of uh, World of Greyhawk and introduction to World of Greyhawk. Um, you, might, you might be able to find them. The Internet's a wonderful thing. So, uh, And then in the Dragon Magazine Annual number 1, which was uh, came out in 1996, um, there was, and this is by Skip Williams, um, it's called Beyond the Flaness, um, which is another word for World of Greyhawk, they call it the Flaness, um, and what he did is he did kind of a small little map here, but this is, um, the entire, uh, planet, basically, of O-Earth which is where the Greyhawk is at. It's on the planet of O-Earth. And this um, map is supposed to show all of that. Um, whereas the World of Greyhawk was just a portion of this, uh, he actually extended it into, so basically as if, if you had a map of the world, of our world, Earth, you could and flattened it out. That's basically what you're looking at here as far as what they, the world there is called O-Earth. And so, and there's actually some background information in this issue as well, beyond the flatness. Um, so, you can still find this on eBay Easy, uh, annual one, and they're not expensive. So, um, if you're interested, that's something you could look up. Uh, then, now we're getting into some better stuff here. Um, there was also the novels that were created for the World Ray Hawk. And I'm not going to show them all. I'm just going to show a couple of them here. Uh, Gary Gygax himself, the father of d, &D um, created the first two. Uh, Saga of Old City and Artifact of Evil. And these both have Gord the Rogue as the main character, this guy right here, on uh, that one and on that one, that guy there. And uh, then... Gary ended up leaving TSR. So there was another writer who continued to write Greyhawk novels by the name of Rose Estes, and they're they're there if you want. To, I have them all, but um, the Gord the Rogue stops there um, as far as uh, under the Greyhawk Adventures uh, logo. But Gary Gygax's deal with TSR was he could continue to write. Um, novels or whatever if he used characters that were originally mentioned in works that he did before he left. So he was able to continue writing and I'm not sure how that deal was all worked out or whatever but he was able to continue writing uh, Gord the Rogue novels. There it says Gord the Rogue here. And so basically I think there's five more of these where that character, so you think that character Gord the Rogue is in the first two of these, and then Gary has five more that he wrote um, when he after he left TSR. And this is under I don't know who published these. Uh, New Infinites Productions is what it's called, and there's quite a few of these. There's I think there's five of them. 
and, and I have them all. It's all in. It's all Gord the Rogue. Uh, great character. So, if you are interested in reading novels, uh, the Greyhawk, I would go these first two, and then I would switch over to the to the ones after Gary left TSR. Um, in addition to that, there was also I don't know if any of you guys remember Endless Quest books, where you would actually be reading the book and it would get, you would get to a point where you'd have to make a decision. And if you decided one thing, you would turn to one page. And if you decided on something else, you'd turn to a different page. And it would change the outcome of the ending um, for that book for you. Uh, well, there was two that were published under the Greyhawk uh, logo. Uh, this one's called Bigby's Curse. There's the uh, Greyhawk thing right there on the corner there. You can see it. And Siege of the Tower. And again, right there is your Greyhawk logo right there. Those were the only two that I know of that had the Greyhawk logo on. Um, and then I have one particular um, item that uh, is very dear to my heart. That is, I got a issue of Dungeon Magazine uh, that was owned by Gary Gygax. It was on uh, up for auction, and I uh, I bid on it. It actually has Gary's mailing label on there, and I'm not gonna. I'll just move that around a little bit because um, I don't know whose address that is, and I don't want that being able to be seen. So um, anyway, so it's got his. Uh, his address label on it and everything, and I have the certificate that came, the certificate of authenticity from uh, from the auctioneer and everything. And it was this issue of Dungeon Magazine. And the reason I bid on this one is because it has a Greyhawk map inside. And I have that map here. And There's more pieces to that map. There was other issues. Um, there's other pieces to, that go with that map, but I wanted this one because Gary himself actually owned this one. So um, that one I was pretty pretty proud to get. Um, and then, uh, last but not least, I think this may be the most obscure um, Greyhawk items that there are out there. I could be wrong. Someone more than uh, is, if you're willing to prove me wrong and. I would love to know about some other items that I don't have so that I can go looking for them. So, um, <clears throat> but I have these miniatures. They're World of Greyhawk, uh, what they call minifigs for minifigures. And I have, a, I have about 10 different uh, packages, and they're all different. Um, this is an aquatic dragon. Um, this one is. Infantry soldiers, and I'm not going to show them all, but I just picked out three of them. That, and then these are little dragonettes, little baby dragons, I guess. They have to, you know, put together and painted and, and the whole bit. But I have a whole, and they're all still. I've never opened any of them, um, so still mint in box, I guess you call them or whatever. Um, but. Uh, that is basically, I'd say about 90% of my Greyhawk collection, maybe 85%, a bunch of more modules and all that type of stuff that just not enough time to show everything. So um, I wanted to do this video so that uh, we could get it up on our Facebook group there for, uh, for the old school role playing game people. And uh, I hope everybody enjoys it. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, suggestions, whatnot, feel free to uh, leave them in the comment box below. And I think that'll do it. So uh, happy gaming, and we will catch you guys on the flip side.